Good day and welcome to JNN's Headline News. I'm Kimberly Broderick. In the headlines at this time, Minister James Johnson of the Church of God of Prophecy on Old Harbor Road was murdered on Thursday. Minister Johnson was gunned down by a man who reportedly shot him seven times in the back, killing him on the spot. The murder took place in the St. Catherine North Division, where a state of emergency is in effect. The police have yet to establish a motive for the killing. An additional 300 closed-circuit television cameras, CCTVs, will be installed in public spaces in Montego Bay, St. James, by the end of the year under the Jamaica Eye Initiative. Of the 106 cameras that have already been installed in Montego Bay, 70 are already operational. Crime mapping and data will be used to determine the locations for the other cameras. An appeal was issued by the police for information on the whereabouts of Brandon McIntosh, who has yet to turn himself in. Mr. McIntosh is a person of interest in relation to last week's poisoning of 19 students of the Duckinfield Primary School in St. Thomas. The Ministry of Education is investigating the incident where students were given unprescribed pills which caused them to fall ill. They are undergoing treatment at the Princess Margaret Hospital. Human rights advocacy group Jamaicans for Justice, JFJ, is reporting that the two recent high-profile cases in which it was involved has prompted more persons to come forward with complaints about local health facilities. Attorney at Law and Policy and Advocacy Manager at JFJ, Monique Long, states that as a result of the two incidents, the organization is now in receipt of more than 20 complaints from across the island. The most recent JFJ case involved the University Hospital of the West Indies and the parents of a 14-month-old cancer patient who were denied access by the hospital to the child's medical records. The other case brought by the JFJ resulted in the Supreme Court, ruling that hospitals should not refuse to issue a death certificate and prevent the release of bodies to force consent to unsupervised post-mortems. Clearance has been given for the repatriation of the 28 Jamaican fishermen who were rescued last week by the Colombian Coast Guard. Their boat reportedly caught fire and sank. The Jamaicans were taken to San Andreas, a Colombian island off the coast of Nicaragua. Jamaica's Ministry of Foreign Affairs indicated in a news release that the verification process has been completed so all the fishermen can return to Jamaica. Arrangements will be made for their return. The private sector organization of Jamaica PSOJ says it will be working with the government to mitigate any negative impact the impending ban on styrofoam products and some plastics could have on the economy. Concerns around the ban, which takes effect on January 1, 2019, could result in job losses. In the meantime, the National Environment and Planning Agency, NEPA, has promised that by December, there will be a robust public education campaign on the impending ban. And in international news, the United States imposed sanctions on Thursday against the Chinese military for buying military weapons from Russia. The move is meant to punish Moscow for activities intended to harm the U.S., including attacks on American elections. The State Department said in a statement, quote, Today's actions are not intended to undermine the military capabilities or combat readiness of any country, but rather to impose costs on Russia in response to its interference in the United States election process, its unacceptable behavior in eastern Ukraine, and other malign activities. End quote. The penalties applied were in keeping with a law that requires the U.S. to sanction anyone undertaking significant transactions with people affiliated with Russian intelligence and military services. This includes arms manufacturers. And that's it for Headline News. Join us at 8 p.m. for more details in Frontline News. I'm Kimberly Broderick, wishing you pleasant viewing.